now tuned in to the, the, the Rap Report Show. I just want to let y'all know, Alfred, man, it's an honor and it's a pleasure to have y'all on the show and, uh, and, and you know, have this moment to speak to y'all, man. Well, it's our pleasure to be here, UB. Definitely a, a good look right now. Definitely, man, definitely. So, um, um, I guess we're going to do the interview together, right? Y'all working on a project together? Is that what it is? Yes, indeed. Uh, the new album, and of course, the partners in the label, Seven Grand Records. And, uh, you know, we've got the the whole real back to real hip hop thing happening, popping off globally. You know what I mean? So it's, you know, we just keep keeping that uh, that that whole aspect of what's been real in hip hop and what's been missing and reinstalling it, so to speak. And uh, you know, we become the global uh, ambassadors of that right now. Yeah, absolutely, man. Much respect and, and, and you know, props for what y'all doing because, you know, I mean, that's, that's what we're trying to do as well on the Rap Report show. So we're just trying to keep that real hip-hop relevant, you know what I mean, and kind of teach the young kids coming up, man. So, you know, much respect for what y'all doing with that, man. But let's talk a little bit about the situation because y'all said y'all got y- y'all partners in the label. What is it, Seven Grand Records? Seven Grand Records, exactly. Okay, and, uh, and, and when did that start? When, when did that come about? Well, uh, Joe Lard and I were introduced by mutual friends about seven years back and um, you know I knew Solo had the heat and uh, I was like um, at a time where I was really tired of, of, of all the different major label influences on my, my creative flow so to speak and, and what I was doing with, with career wise and artistically and um, I used to express a lot of that to Solo and you know we had hit it off as friends like beyond the music and um, one night in particular I was I was talking to Solo about, about this stuff and uh you know, he said to me, you know, if it's, if it's that bad, you know, Guru, you're a legend. You're you're an icon. You know, start your own label. I was like, hmm. I thought about it. I was like, yeah. <laughs> you know, it's a good idea. You know what I mean? So I hollered back at him, and um, I, I said, you know, yo, God, you know, I want to do this label thing. And he was like, well, good luck. And I was like, no, I mean, I want you to get down with me <laughs> on it. And um, you know, he felt it was it was it was there was an importance in that, and then we. we and we, and we structured things and put it together. Right. So um, the first release was 2005, Guru version 7.0, the street scriptures. Yeah. Uh, crazy, crazy, crazy underground uh, classic. Yeah, we yeah, had yeah. everybody from Be Real to Talib Kweli and Jean Grey to uh, Styles P, Duop, uh, Jaguar Wright, and uh, just, just um, you know, one, one of my favorite albums. And um, that that did very well um, sales wise as an independent that year, and enabled us to get an even better distribution situation. And then we put out Jazz and Jazz for August 07, an- another classic. And um, man, we had everybody on. That was a star-studded event. I mean, Common, Damian Marley, um, <clears throat> Karen Wheeler from Soul to Soul, Vivian Green, Raheem Devon, Kim. Uh, Slum Village, Black Alicious, Jazz Greats like Bob James, Ronnie Laws, and David Sanborn, and, and uh, the, the list goes on. We put together such a such a great, sophisticated record that that, that rejuvenated the, the Jazz with Jazz legacy. But at the same time, we, you know, without any major inf- the major label influence, we did that all all ourselves. We're all right. major label support, no major label mix. Exactly, yeah. exactly. But I'm saying, like, with all the names you had on it, it was like, I, I was like, wow, I was so impressed with the, you know what I mean, with the body of work on there. That was, oh, I, I see what you're saying. Yeah. And, and, you know, it, it was an album that, that it, in different times, let's say if we'd have put that out in the 90s, yes, it would have been a very, very huge commercial record. But Word. in fact, um, it really was more looked at as a, as a and it was looked at as a classic album, but, but not in the commercial sense, but certainly the, the level of appeal that the album has you could say that that it, uh, it has that appeal, but but it, it's, it's an album that that really is a, a more of an artistic statement or a statement of Guru and Solar and Seven Grand than uh, than an album that was, that had generated millions of sales. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I feel it. I feel it. And um, from there, then we went on to in 08, February 08, we released the first Jazz and Taz Mix CD, bringing bringing together the underground heads, the the real hip hop, you know, connoisseurs with the more sophisticated jazz and jazz listeners and bringing all that together as one, you know, and it, it was, that was incredible. It was, it was a Solar's idea and it was really brilliant because we got, we got MCs like Mr. Lip, uh, AC Alone, Zion Eye, Blue Scholar, Common Market, um, some legends like Lord Tariq and Nature and um, 
Phenolis and Dibble were playing this plus cable and high power from the seven grand fans and um, from Philadelphia. And um, just incredible. Uh, 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 just to, to, to make a mix CD in a jazz and jazz kind of format. But uh, it was, and it was great. you know, the underground version of jazz and jazz. And, yeah. and, and in fact, it's a little misleading that it, that it, that it was a mix CD because the production was, was really a uh, studio quality production that we did on the album. So it wasn't your typical mix CD. A lot more production uh, efforts went into it. And it was a, a well, much well thought out. So it was like an album, but being hosted by, uh, by, by uh, our, our, our DJ, our, our touring DJ, and also our in-house uh, uh, resident, one of our brothers from a different mother, uh, DJ Dua, the legend. No doubt, but um, Guru, you you say this is the first time you you actually had a label, but I remember back, you know, years back, you had the Ill Kid imprint, right? Was that yours or was that? Yeah, yeah, that no, that was mine, but that was really what that was was never there was never any albums, and it was it was only singles that I put out, and it was a way for me to learn the business and to to help those artists that I was working with at that time get uh, you know some some things going for themselves. Oh, okay. This okay. is a real label. Right, 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 right. This is, real, this is like, man, yeah. this has turned into a movement yeah. worldwide. No doubt. Well, all the projects we just mentioned so far, you know what I mean, have been pretty, you know, pretty incredible, man. I mean, you're setting a pretty high bar for yourself, you know what I mean? I so, mean, in, in the time when, you know, we all know that uh, things are tight, you know, economically and in the music business, you know, you got CD sales declining and this and that, and we're, and we're doing well. We're making it happen we're yeah. on a worldwide level, like Solar said. And, 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 and that's a great thing. I mean, it's, it's all all from our dedication to the culture and to the art form. I think I think really what, what we're talking about as far as setting the standards. Remember, this is Guru we're talking about, right. the icon, the legend. You know what I mean? Yeah. So uh, you, you know, we are setting the bar extremely high. But you know what? Guru's always been known for that. Even if you go absolutely back really to, to the beginning of his his, his career in the, in the early nineties when when he really took off, Jazz is way ahead of his time. time. Absolutely. The whole concept was Absolutely. Um, and of course, the way that that, that uh, the marketing division of Virgin Records marketed uh, Jazz and Taz very differently, they marketed Guru's other work. So at Seven Ground, we're doing is bringing all of that together, and that brings us to our new album, which is 8.0, which is a real hip hop album. This is not Jazz and Taz. Absolutely. This is back to the, this is back to the street, back to the basics of what what hip hop is all about. Back to that boom bap, right? I wouldn't say it's a full back because my style of production is, is, is very advanced, you know what I mean? But it, but it definitely has street appeal and it's definitely got the head knockers and, uh, and it, it's just got a sound that's going to, that, that's grabbing, you know, it's going to grab you, it's going to make you feel what real hip hop is about, you know, I'm not trying to do pop hop and not doing, uh, you know, pseudo hop, we're, we're just putting it down the right way and, and like Guru said before, you can't go back to the past, but in fact, we can take the principles that real hip hop is about and take it to the future because some of the stuff that they're calling hip hop right now, uh, all you have Brother, much respect for that, man. That's a very strong point of view, man, and that's the way it should be, man. Hip hop should be kept like that, man. So, um, let's talk a little bit about the production on the album. Is it only you, Solar? You you, you did all the production? Yeah, man. It, it's been that way, and I think it's gonna stay that way for a second. I don't know as we as we sign new artists, but um, yeah, I put it down, and, and it's uh, it's five thousand degrees of burning. Trust me. Beautiful. You got that heat. You got that fire, and, that, and that's the thing is that you know. This is, this is what Seven Grand represents, a new, a new sound in hip-hop, as well as, as, as a movement uh, towards, toward, you know, progressive, positive, intelligent, but streetwise music, you know, all of that together. And, and he, he's bringing the heat. And, and when, when, Ken, when Cat hear this, Google 8.0 lost and found. They're going to bug out. They're going to wig out because it, it isn't, you know, we aren't really going back. We, it, it, like so I said, it's back to the future. So it's a sound that's very futuristic, but it's not commercial. And it's not it's not mainstream crossover or whatever you want to call it. It's not pop. 